My name's Sam Boone and I work for Signet as part of AHDB and I'm going to talk to you about the latest RAM compare results. There's a separate presentation that actually talks about the research that we've done in the last 12 months relating to RAM compare. This particular presentation talks a little bit about individual RAMs and how data can be accessed and is presented. The RAM Compare project, for those that don't know, is a commercial progeny test. So we're getting RAMs for natural service and AI, uh, quarantining the natural service sires, getting data on the lamb crop that they produce, taking measurements on farms. And then the beauty of the progeny test is that we're also getting abattoir data that we can use to link all this information together. These records are used to produce breeding values and breeding indexes that help our RAM selection decisions for a whole range of traits that are important for producers that are looking to purchase terminal sires. And only through this project have we been able to get abattoir data and to actually enable us to analyse that data for traits like days to slaughter, carcass weight, confirmation and fat class. None of this will be possible without our funders. We've got levy funding coming in to support the project, those collaborating with us to collect data and our supporters within industry to helping to get the messages out. So it's a really big industry team effort and one of the biggest projects of its kind within sheep breeding circles in the UK. A lot of breeders want to know that's all well and good, but where does my ram rank? Where does he sit uh, compared to others? And we've probably got two ways of looking at that. We can either have a look comparing that ram to all the other breeds on test or focusing on how that ram actually compares within the breed analysis that's being produced. And when we first ran the project, we were probably interested in the 50 or 60 sires that we would tested within that first season. But now we'd be encouraging people to think a bit more widely about how certain breeding lines are performing within the breed compared to other animals within the breed so that they can use that to make better selection decisions when going out to buy a ram in question. But there's more to it than just where does my ram rank? One of the really important things arising from the project is our ability to use this information and clearly show the financial impact of improved genetics on commercial farms. So some really good case studies where we've sent in high genetic merit animals and they've led to progeny that are heavier and have reached slaughter much faster than the contemporaries of whom they're being reared with on farms. So some really good examples to push this industry message out of rams whose progeny are worth an extra five to seven pounds a head and that are potentially worth thousands more pounds over their working lifetime. But it's more than just the ranking of individual rams. Through the project, we've been able to look at aspects of flock health and tests that are used within quarantine. We've been able to look at genomic approaches, uh, assessing parentage using DNA. We've looked at you efficiency and the body condition score and you mature weights that have worked their way into our maternal evaluations. We've looked at the way farm data is represented back to farms. We've looked at genetic research and done a lot of work there developing new breeding values and indexes. We've learned a bit about trial design and the way that we record management groups. And we've even done a bit of work on meat quality, where we've looked at shear force and tenderness and the genetic aspects that will actually influence those traits. So it's a lot more than just a genetic test. And looking to the future, this data is going to be really important. It's helping us already in our research, looking at the relationship between CT traits and abattoir traits so that we can enhance our evaluation. And my other presentation talks about that a little bit more. It's creating the breed comparison data that underpins our multi-breed evaluations and give us new options for the future. It will certainly underpin genomic research where we start using information about DNA within evaluations. And it's really important for our environmental work where we want to understand more about days to slaughter, which from a terminal sire perspective is the one trait that probably has the biggest impact uh, on the overall carbon footprint of lamb production. And those things don't stand in isolation. They actually lead to greater uh, genetic services being delivered, benefiting both breeders and ram buyers. So having said all that, let's actually have a bit of a look at some of the results. So first of all, we'll have a quick look at the, the multi-breed results for lambs born last year 
uh, and uh, predominantly killed last year and a few into early January. So trait leaders in terms of days to slaughter, you can see we've got a mix of breeds there, but you've got quite a few um, hamps and charolais coming through in the rankings. Um, we've got a, a lamb there born up at Thistleyhoff from high genetic merit parents that tops the table. You've got Norman B and SE and Clamferris uh, genetics sitting second, third and fourth. So uh, those would be some of our uh, trait leaders on, on a mixed breed basis for this season. Uh, so minus 12, meaning the breeding potential for that ram to have progeny away uh, 12 days earlier. It's going to pass half of his genetic merit on. But even so, that's a ram with the capability of getting lambs away nearly a week earlier than uh, than an animal with an EBV of naught. In terms of carcass weight, we've got a couple of uh, texels sitting near the top of the list there. Animals with the breeding potential to give over a kilo uh, higher carcass weights than um, others within that population. Um, so you've got quite a few of those, quite a lot of charolais, and I can see some meat links there. Uh, sitting in very closely behind them. Uh, and we've even got one of our Oxford Downs um, that's come through into the top rankings. Uh, he's performed extremely well up on our farm in Northumberland. So a whole range of breeds in involved uh, in this progeny test. And when it comes to carcass confirmation, well, you can see that we've got both the Beltex and a, a Charolais sitting at the top of the rankings with some uh, Texels sitting uh, just below those real high confirmation animals but you know equally we've got south down i can see there blue texel and hampshire down rams that have all performed well for carcass confirmation and be some of the higher performing rams uh, within their breeds for this particular attribute so this is the mixed breed evaluation but it's probably more important to focus within a breed and you can go through to the signet website and you can see some quick summaries that Laura's already loaded uh, within a particular breed. But Signet clients can also generate their own at any moment in time. We do 12 evaluations, uh, one a month throughout the year. Results are constantly being updated. And if you go to reports, breed summary and carcass traits, you can run your own report to see who's the current uh, trait leader within the breed. And that's where the carcass trait report sits. So. You can limit it to the age of the sires being tested. You can decide what trait uh, you're interested in, whether it's the overall lamb value, which is our sub index that pulls together carcass weight, confirmation and days to slaughter, or whether you want to look at those traits in isolation, as I guess we did a minute ago. You can also set minimum progeny numbers. So we'll just have a very quick look at the breeds. These are some of our leading uh, Beltex that we, we've tested uh, on the all time basis. Uh, so we've got an AI sire that's sitting at the top uh, that had a reduced taste to slaughter, really good carcass weight and a really good confirmation. So he's uh, one of the top rams in terms of lamb value. You can see a couple of Matt Prince's Stone Edge rams. Uh, so Matt provided that semen to us um, and uh, you can see some of his homebred rams sitting in there quite high on the list, including some that we've, we've used this year. In terms of blue texels, uh, that's dominated by um, genetics from two particular flocks. Uh, and again, you can see rams there with really good carcass weights, really good confirmation uh, that have come out to the top of the list on overall lamb value. In terms of Charolais, um, again, a range of, of bloodlines there. If you look at the Charolais list, you'll see well over 100 sires uh, being tested. The low I ram from a couple of years ago still sits at the top of the list. Uh, and Hyde Vallegro, who performed really well last year, I believe. Um, again, you can see them ticking all the boxes in terms of days to slaughter, carcass weight and, and confirmation. Uh, Hampshire Down got several from the Normandy flock here. Um, Ed Brandt provides quite a lot of rams for us to, to test. So he has a few horses uh, running in the race, so to speak. But over the years, these have performed strongly, particularly for days to slaughter um, with the fast growing Hampshire lambs uh, going off farm uh, particularly quickly on our commercial tests. Uh, meat links. So we've, we've got uh, Richardson value there aptly named sitting at the top of the list. Uh, 
throwing really high carcass weights, an extra kilo there uh, of uh, uh, carcass weight being thrown by that particular ram and getting them weighed slightly earlier. So that's probably down on one of our uh, Cornish test farms that he's performed particularly well. But all of the, the various meat link breeders, they have quite similar genetics because they work closely together, uh, all getting rams that are sitting high within the overall rankings. Uh, Shropshire flock, uh, we've got a couple of Hainoak rams there that are sitting highly. We've got some data from the Hainoak flock, uh, abattoir data that's actually been used in the analysis. And then sitting under that would be rams uh, that we've actually used on the progeny test itself that have performed particularly well uh, in, in recent seasons. In terms of South Downs, uh, Ridings Daniel still sits out on top um, because of the very high carcass weights that were being thrown when his progeny went on test. But you see that we've got genetics from the Andersi and Ridings flocks sitting in close behind um, with various different strengths and weaknesses um, between those rams that, that are on test. But uh, a number of South Downs get tested each year and it's fantastic to have the contrast uh, in terms of performance with some of the, the continental breeds, for example. No, they're performing well. Uh, in terms of Suffolk's, uh, we've got a couple of breeding lines here that are actually related to one another that have constantly come out really high in terms of carcass weight uh, and confirmation. Um, I suspect the, uh, the Hans um, ram there would appear in the back pedigree of quite a few of those animals that sit at the top, and they're all really high producing an extra kilo or so of carcass weight, as well as reaching uh, slaughter slightly faster than some of the other rams on test. So some really important Suffolk breeding lines to be aware of. And same would be true in, in terms of the Texels. So here you can see quite a few Texel rams uh, that gain not just for the carcass weight, but uh, lambs finishing faster than some of the other Texels that we've had on test. And that's contributed to their overall lamb value. So a real very fast run through um, within the individual breeds and lots of that information can be accessed very quickly. So to summarise, the breeding values for carcass traits are really only a few clicks away. You can access most of them through the Signet website. Ram buyers can use the existing traits that we have, things like scan weight and muscle depth and fat depth with real confidence to ensure that uh, they're getting those rams with the best carcass attributes. But there are also some updates being planned where we're gonna to bring together the measurements in the pedigree flocks and the abattoir data to actually do an even better job of predicting carcass merit in 2025. So watch this space. For those who want to chat to us a bit more this season, uh, we've got a couple of open days, 24th of May, uh, we're up in Leicestershire and the 25th of June, we're across in Wales with HCC, um, who are very keen supporters of Ram Compare. So we're going to be talking about the project there. And I shall also be at the sheep event where you can uh, ask me more about this progeny test. If you've got any more questions, please contact uh, Bridget, who runs the project. So you can see her here, myself uh, or Laura within AHDB. And for further information, we've produced a brand new manual about buying a recorded RAM, and that has some of the information that we've featured here. Thank you.